distance Through the shadows You came running With arms wide open With a whisper Call me close Now I'm all in Yours forever Cause you can make my soul sing You can make my Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St. Mary's. Well done for making it here through the blustery wind. It is really, the, the seasons have changed, and as a man who loves summer, I'm just going to have to make my peace with that. So welcome, well done for making it here. Uh, as we begin our service, we can, as you can see, we will, for the first time, since uh, the pandemic began, we will be celebrating communion together. We will be sharing it together. Um, and for those who are joining us from home, uh, we do hope that you will be able to continue uh, in taking an Agape meal at your home in, with your main meal. In fact, by the time you're watching this, you may have already done it. So um, we are joining together across time and space and in all sorts of ways. We are joining together as the people of God in worship of him. So... Uh, as we begin, why don't we just uh, take a moment of quiet to still ourselves with whatever else has been going on this morning. God is here with us. It is him that we need. In John's Gospel, after the resurrection of Jesus, he writes this. He says, when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I was just really struck as I was uh, praying 
this morning uh, that this is what we all need to know, the presence of Jesus in the midst with us, that through the, the changing times and as lockdown eases and gets more restrictive again and, and the ebbs and flows of all that happens, however however locked down we feel at this point in time or however we will experience this ongoing pandemic. The truth that we read is that even in the midst of restriction, even when the doors need to be locked, Jesus comes and stands in the midst with us and says, peace with you. Receive my Holy Spirit. Malcolm is going to come and share uh, from the word with us this morning, talking about is a time where the church and our nation needs to know revival. We need to know the Holy Spirit's power and presence and peace with us. That is what we need more than anything else in this world. We need God's Holy Spirit. So Martin is going to come up and uh, just lead us in a song of, of worship. You may well not know it. I think the words are going to come up on the screen. But I just invite you, should we all stand? What we need is God. We need his spirit. And so I just invite you, in whatever way um, is normal and natural for you, just to use this time to become aware afresh of the presence of God with you. Perhaps to hear those words spoken to you, peace be with you. Receive my Holy Spirit. And as Martin leads us, I invite you to um, encounter God for yourself. And then afterwards, we will um, have a time of prayer together. But before that, Martin.
and stir us, Holy Spirit. Thank you that we need never be alone because your spirit always goes with us. I just want to invite us all as we um, remain in this attitude of praise and worship. Um, we're going to do something that we did last week. I just want to invite you all in your places where you are and just to begin offering up your own prayers, whispered prayers to God. We can, we can do this uh, just to begin to pray whatever is on your heart whether there's a particular place in the world that you're concerned about or a particular situation with your family or your, or your friends in your community. Let's just begin to offer up our praise, our thanksgiving, our, the needs of our world to our God. And um, as we do that, as we begin to pray, I just want to invite you if you, um, if you feel that prompting to just come up to share the, a prayer. It's just to speak a prayer over our community. This is the beautiful thing about being the people of God, that we can all bring a prayer and we can all share that prayer and then everyone can join in and say amen. And we can stand together and pray for our nation and pray for our world, to pray for our family. So let's just pray now. I just invite you to start praying where you are. just um, do feel free to come up don't don't be shy come and share a prayer um, just come to the lectern here and share your prayer it doesn't have to be deep it doesn't have to be profound it doesn't have to be long short prayers can be the most powerful prayers so I just invite you to come up um, as we continue to pray just um, lift our world up to you Lord as everybody is struggling with this COVID virus we thank you so much for the scientists and all the medical people that are working so hard on a vaccine and Lord Jesus we just pray that you would lead and guide them to have a breakthrough and, and that one would be available really soon and um, Lord also we just pray for people in positions of authority trying to make decisions Lord, we just pray that you would guide them and help them to know the right thing to do. In your precious name, Lord Jesus. 
Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, everyone. Do feel free to take a seat. Uh, we've just got some um, some brief notices to share. Again, these are um, uh, sort of picking up on similar themes from from last week. So uh, the first thing that we uh, just wanted to say was it is our um, our APCM, our annual church meeting, is coming up uh, on the seventh. Of October, uh, it's at 7:45 p.m. and uh, we just wanted to. If you would like to come, if you are planning on um, attending that that meeting, uh, then please could you let the church office know um, by email or by phone? That would be really helpful, just so we can make sure that um, we can seat everybody comfortably and uh, properly um, as you are now. So please, uh, please do do that. And if you at the annual church meeting, this is where we elect our PCC. Those, that's our trustees. Uh, members of uh, Deanery Synod um, who who work who join together with churches in our local area to see the gospel proclaimed. And um, if you would like to stand for either the PCC or as a Deanery Synod um, rep, then please um, speak to Malcolm, uh, uh, but also get in touch with the church office. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, and n- uh, we have our harvest service on the 4th of October. Uh, the 4th of October is our harvest collection. And as you probably know, um, in previous years, what we've done is we've taken collections of, of, of items for Food Bank um, and for Millgrove too. Um, they've asked that this year that we don't collect physical items, but it's a financial collection only. So please um, come ready um, for that if you would like to contribute uh, on the 4th of October. Uh, and then finally, just to let you know, um, with communion, which we will come to later in our service, uh, Malcolm and I have been um, going through the guidance to make sure that we can do this in a way that keeps everyone safe. Um, so uh, we just wanted to to uh, let you know that we will come to you. Um, so when the time comes, you don't need to come up. We will come to you. Um, we will have sanitized. We will have face masks on. Um, and we will. Um, the guidance is that we serve. In, we serve you communion, which will be bread only in silence. So just to let you know that that's coming. Um, Martin uh, will, will come up after receiving for himself um, and will lead us um, in some worship so that, that you can continue to pray and uh, encounter God whilst you're waiting for us to make our way through the, through the aisles. So um, just to let you know that that is how that will happen. So we... Um, just hang on. Ooh. Just... Uh, Sorry. Um, Steve, we had a great day yesterday. It was such a brilliant day. And I think we should give Steve a big round of applause because he, he uh, was ordained as a priest in the church. It's great. <laughs> Michelle has a... We, we're actually giving, we're giving Steve little presents throughout the day because we've got these four services. So this is the next one. Uh, the first one you'll see later on, which was a, a very cool face mask with a cross on it. But uh, this is another gift that we've got for you, Steve. We love you uh, and Sarah and Samuel, a family. We're just really grateful for all that God has done through you here. So, uh, yes. <laughs> if you can't read it, it says, Reverend Steve Opie's important papers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can I just pray for you you and the family? Father God, we just thank you so much that we get to share in ministry together. Thank you that we, as a church family, get to share with Steve, Sarah, and Samuel. We bless their family, and we thank you that they're part of our our big family, Lord Jesus. And we want to pray today a particular blessing on our brother Steve, Father, in the call of God on his life. Pour out your spirit and your love and your grace upon him continually in Jesus name amen 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 thank you thank you all you're so kind um I definitely thought I was going to get away without that this service um I was meant to be in charge uh right (laughs) we have come to um we uh uh we're coming to slot our ignite slot 
Um, we we have had a, one of our wonderful, beautiful um, Ignite volunteers has been unable to come and join us because she, she and the family are waiting for their COVID test results. So um, what, by the wonders of technology, uh, there are going to be just two short videos um, which we we'll just invite you to um, to watch and then um, we'll pick up. So um, Elijah was a prophet in Israel and he lived in a time where there was a reign of many kings who were not faithful um, to God and they they followed their own pro um, that followed their own idols and they didn't follow God. So in that time there was a series of prophets that um, God brought down into Israel um, for people who, who could hear from God in order to try and reunite the people back to God. So Elijah was one of these people and he did a really um, hard thing among the time where people were living and not listening to God. And um, he was out of the ordinary. He was going against the grain of what everyone else was doing, following this God. Um, I'm sorry, Eleni, we appear to have had a technical failure. <laughs> um, should, we, should we play the next video, which will tell us all about Elijah? Um. So this is where we are in the story. God made a perfect world, but people made some bad choices. But God still loved them, and he let people be a part of his story. People like Elijah. Elijah was a prophet. A prophet is someone who hears from God and tells people what God said. What God says isn't always popular, so prophets weren't always liked. Elijah told people to pray to God. Only God. No one else. They didn't listen. They made up their own gods. Like Baal. Baal? Baal? Sail? Baal? Baal? Baluga? Baal was a cow statue made of pure gold, and people worshipped it. A cow statue? Weird. But they weren't supposed to worship a cow statue. They were supposed to worship God. He's the only one who deserves to be worshipped. So Elijah had an idea. He went to the king with a challenge to see whose God was truly good. They both brought sacrifices to burn. And Elijah said, Pray your God, but don't light the fire. If your God is real, he'll burn up the sacrifice without your help. So the people prayed to Baal. They danced, they jumped, and nothing. After a few hours, Elijah started teasing them. Maybe your God can't hear you. Maybe he's sleeping or on vacation. Maybe he's in the bathroom. Finally, Elijah said, Enough. It's my turn. He built an altar for God, dug a big trench around it, and soaked everything with water. The wood, the sacrifice, the whole altar. Then Elijah asked God to show up with fire. And that second, the altar and the animal and all that wet wood went up in flames. The people started worshiping God right away. The real God. The one God. The only God. We all forget about God sometimes and choose to love something else. But he's always ready to remind us of how much he loves us. Later, God reminded us again. But that's another part of the story. I love those videos. That's so good. Uh, that is, in a nutshell, the story of Elijah and the encouragement, actually, to all of us that even though it's sometimes hard and at different times in our lives, we'll find ourselves in a position where everyone thinks we should do one thing, but we know that God's calling us to do another thing. Actually, that we trust him. We trust that God is present. This is the, the one big challenge, I think, in our lives is to live in such a way that we demonstrate that we believe God is alive and God is at work. This is the call that is upon our lives, each and every one of us. And no matter where we are, no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, we all have the opportunity to do that. Because God, who is extraordinary, is with us, and even when we feel very, very ordinary. So that is the story of Elijah.
Uh, we're going to have our Bible reading. Um, so if you have your Bible or you have it on your phone and you want to, to flick it open, um, the Bible reading for today is um, from the book of Acts. And it is the first 11 verses of the very first chapter. And it says this. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them over the course of 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking upwards towards heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, church. And we are looking at Acts chapter 1 today, so do, if you've got your Bible with you, which I hope you have, you can bring your own Bible to church. So um, it'd be great to look at this. And the, the subject today I've got is time for revival. We've been looking over the past month about returning to God, resetting, repentance, and today on revival. And I think a lot of people are feeling a bit uh, weary perhaps a bit lost, perhaps a bit fragile, or a bit troubled at the moment with all the backwards and forwards that we've got with lockdown and COVID. And, and actually, if history teaches us anything, it's in times of crisis that the people of God are called to cry out to God more than ever before. Uh, and I think that's true for us now. Uh, I, I'm sure that uh, uh, revival comes whenever we really begin to sense the depth of our need for God to move. And I wonder if we're at getting to that place or are at that place and you just want to cry out to God uh, for his love, for his mercy, for his compassion uh, to be shown to so many. This people are like sheep without a shepherd, confused and disorientated in so many ways. And, and we who know the hope of Christ, we pray that God will move by his spirit and that this will be a time of genuine hope, not just through vaccines, not just through um, the, the measures taking place, but actually hope that comes through salvation in Christ. That's the eternal hope that we have. And I'm sure that COVID and, has magnified, really, the sense of call to us for repentance and prayer. Uh, we've spoken about this before. And as I've heard, read various accounts over the years of revivals, when God has swept in by his Holy Spirit and done remarkable things. I mean, we serve the God, like the God of Elijah. We serve him. He's the God who can bring the fire from heaven. He's the God of miracles. He's the God of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. This Lord and God who is almighty and all loving and all gracious and all good and all holy, he's our God. And he's able to do as the Bible says, exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or even imagine, according to his power that is at work in us. And so to, when I read accounts of revivals like the Reformation, when the, the gospel spread like wildfire throughout Europe, 
or the Methodist revival where in this nation we saw the power of God really come on this nation at a time when they were thrown out of churches. That was when God moved powerfully. Or in times like in Wales in 1904 or across the whole United Kingdom in 1859 or in Lewis in 1949. And the Spirit of God came in power upon a whole community and there was transformation and it didn't come from a one church or one program or one person it was the Holy Spirit moving and I believe that's what we need and I wonder if God is stirring up Martin's song that we were led in today really blessed me because I, that's what I want that's my prayer Lord stir my heart Lord bring the fire of God into my heart for this who knows if you are a disciple of Jesus right now for such a time as this we're not called to just keep our heads above the water uh, uh, on, in this time. We're called to actually get down and pray as God's people. That's the call on us. May the fire of God stir us as the saints of God today to be those who pray. In these times, if, if ever there was a time to pray, it is now. And, you know, we've, when I think about the histories of revival, you know, the, I think I shared this last week, but the fastest growing church now, never mind some other time, but right now is in Iran, where they are facing persecution for being Christians. And the church is growing 20% a year in Iran with no buildings, with no centralized structure, a movement mainly led by women. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? The church in Iran is doubling every five years, and they are facing limitation, restriction, difficulty, persecution. Even more than, uh, more, than, more than the restrictions we have, they have much more, but the church is growing. My friends today, I believe that is, we talk about this here, the church is the hope of the world, and it's true, because we're the people of God and we want to partner with God now in prayer to see God do a mighty thing. I want to show a video actually, it's through open doors and it's a, it also reminds us of the church in China. And the Chinese church had this same testimony. So let's just watch this video for a few minutes. Have you ever thought about what church looks like in another country? What it would be like to risk everything for simply following Jesus. These are the secret believers. It's 1949 and the People's Republic of China has just been established. China is ruled by a guy called Mao Zedong, an atheist and communist dictator who seeks to destroy Christianity at all costs. It is estimated that there are one million Christians in China at this point in time. And for the next 30 years, they face severe persecution. Believers imprisoned, pastors abused, and Bibles were burnt in their thousands. By 1979, there was an estimated 10 million believers, and that number soon doubled to 20 million. How did this great revival take place under such severe persecution? At the time, reports from China said that there was one thing that stood out, and it was the amount of time that these believers would spend in prayer. But it wasn't that they were praying for their own suffering. They were praying for their country. They were praying that revival would come to China. This is where the revival started, with prayer. There were so many believers in China, but nowhere near enough Bibles. Over the last 30 years, Open Doors has delivered more than 40 million Bibles and pieces of Christian literature into China. 
Today, there are an estimated 80 million Christians in China, and there is no longer a Bible drought. But this isn't the end. Christians are still being persecuted. House churches are still being attacked and shut down, with members beaten and imprisoned. But what if this revival has only just begun? What if we prayed for revival in other countries? Or revival in our country? Pray. Pray for the persecuted. Pray for those people who share our faith, but not our freedom. Pray for the people who constantly live in fear for simply following Jesus. And pray that we might be inspired to make a difference in our country. No prison, no border, and no door is closed to us when we pray. You see, one of the greatest revivals in the history of the world was built on prayer. That's a powerful message, isn't it? From 1 million to 80 million, those believers, through persecution, through difficulty. It wasn't easy for, those, for that church. They faced restrictions. Just, you know, we've got different kinds of restrictions on us at the moment, but we don't want to focus on the restrictions. We want to focus on the kingdom, to focus on the mission, to focus on the call of God, to focus on our, our heart's desire to see many people you know, we need to pray for revival in this nation now. We need God. We need God just as the Chinese church called out to God for their nation. What if we got a vision during this time? What if this was an awakening cry to us? We need revival in this land. We need revival in this town. We need revival in our homes in our families. We need the Spirit of God to break through. It's not more activity that we need. It is God himself. And when we go back at some time to being able to open up again our, our society, to open up again our church in a, bit, in, a, in a less restricted way, we don't just want to go back to activity. We want to go back to more of the kingdom of God. But we don't have to wait. We don't have to just stick ahead in the sand or just keep ahead above water. Uh, we, we don't have to wait. We can pray now. We can seek God now. We can say, Lord, now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Because right now, there are hundreds of thousands of people who are lost without Christ. And our land, we're living in a time where people have turned from God's word, where there's actually a, a, a poverty of prayer in the church a famine of the word of God in our land, where, where the selfishness, where we've not loved our neighbor uh, as we are called to love. And, and the lack of love is perhaps one of the greatest reasons why we need an outpouring of the Spirit, why we need the, the, the Lord to stir our hearts afresh and to give us more fire in our hearts that we may love more, that we may reach out, that we may love our community with the love of Christ. We have destroyed our planet through greed, we have uh, in so many ways uh, been ashamed of the gospel at different times in our lives. And now is the time for the church, I believe, to stand, to be a light set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Friends, today something is missing in the church. And it isn't just that we can't meet together the way we used to. What's missing, and, and I've felt this over a while and even before lockdown, what's missing is the power of God. What's missing is the power of the Spirit, such as we saw on the day of Pentecost. That's why I've picked on Acts chapter 1 today, because there's a couple of key words here. It says, Jesus said to the disciples, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised. And he said that uh, for John baptized with water, but a few days' time you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I want to, to, just to see, hear that one word, wait. Why did Jesus tell them not to go on ahead? They had the cross, they had the resurrection, surely they should just get on ahead 
and do things for God. Well, actually, Jesus said, don't do it yet because there's one essential ingredient you're going to need, and it is the Holy Spirit. And we obtain the Holy Spirit through prayer. He said, wait, wait before you jump, before you get up there, before you start organizing and having activities and programs, wait. And I really believe that the Holy Spirit wants to stir us to wait on God. I, the Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he, he heard my cry. Friends, today, are we willing to, to wait on God? Are we willing to pray? Are we willing to get on our knees like never before, just in, a, in the quietness of your own home? Just get on your knees before God and say, God, I'm, I'm waiting on you for the power of the Spirit in my life. Bring revival to me and bring revival to those around me. Lord, send revival and start in me. That's the prayer that I believe that God is lo he's looking for people to stand in that gap in prayer. He's looking for people who say, I'm going to be stirred up. I'm not going to just take this sit sitting back. We need today to pray for God to be moving. And if, the, if it can happen in Iran, if it can happen in China, and it has happened here before, friends, today, this is our moment. Yes, we're restricted. Yes, there are things we can and can't do. Uh, uh, and, and that's the world we're living in. But it doesn't, it doesn't contain the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is bigger. The kingdom of God is brighter. The kingdom of God has hope at its heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're meant to live like Jesus in these times. And God is calling us to really go for it. And then the second word here in Acts 1 verse 8, not only the word wait, but the word power. Jesus said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you'll be witnesses for me. And that's what the church in China received and in Iran. And so many churches have experienced this throughout the years, the power of God. And friends, today I just want to awaken in us a longing and a thirst and a hunger to see the power of God move in our communities, in our streets, in our homes, and in our lives. Uh, when have we seen the power of God? We want to see the power. I want the more of the power of God in my own life. And I hope and pray that we all do. We want to wait. You know what it says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14? He says, the Lord says, If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Friends, today the, the, the message of the healing of our land is through the church uh, stepping up to pray the true healing of the land. Not so much from COVID, but there's, a, there's a greater dread out there. It's called sin. And we need healing in our land. We need healing all over our land in so many ways. Salvation and healing and hope and joy and strength and comfort and the presence of God. Friends, this is, we need revival in our day. Is there an amen out there? We need revival. We need the Holy Spirit more than we ever could be, have ever thought before. Friends, let's, I just want to invite you simply in your own home to spend time in prayer. However you do that, however long or short you're able to do that, I just want to invite you to do it. Let's become a house of prayer. If the Chinese church could teach us anything, they would just say to us right now, pray, 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 and then pray some more. Pray without ceasing and discover, get on our knees for revival and partner with God for the 130,000 souls in our district here who, who still, to, still don't know that there's a way to God, still don't know that there's an, a real hope that is living. They don't know that. How are they getting through COVID times and they don't know there's a, there is a savior? I don't know how they're doing it because we need, that, we need that savior and we need that revival power of God in our own community. So can I just call us to pray? There is a prayer time, as Steve announced, coming up on Zoom uh, over this week. But really, what I'm asking you to do is to begin to call out to God yourself. Now, you, some of you might say, well, I don't know how to do that. All you need to do, friends, is... You know, I, the simplest way I find is to get on your knees by your bedside and just start and just say, oh God, saturate me, 
Baptize me in the Holy Spirit. Fill me afresh, Lord. I need you. And just, just start to be honest with God. Just pour out your heart to God for whatever is on your heart and say, God, send revival in my life and in my family and in my street. Lord, send revival in my community. Lord, I don't know what to pray for, but the Spirit just groans within me and says we need God in our day. We need God. So are, are you willing to be stirred up? Are you willing to take action? Because the, this is not a message for reflection. It's a message for action. It's a message for deed. It's a message for, for the call to action and a call to repentance and a call to prayer uh, in our day and in our time. Let me just pray for us and then hand over to Steve. Father, we pray and humble ourselves before you and pray, Lord Jesus, that you would give us that urgency and that passion. Give us, Lord, that great love of Jesus in our hearts to pray and pray and pray. Give us strength, we pray, and grace and resilience. Father, we thank you that Elijah was just like we are, an ordinary person, and yet he prayed, and the power of God came. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd fill us, ordinary saints here today, weak and fragile and troubled as we are. Lord, make us instruments of blessing. Make us, Lord, thank you that in your strength, Lord, is made perfect in our weakness. And in the weakness of our prayers, Father, we pray, move and do a wonderful thing. Come, Holy Spirit, and stir your church as never before. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Malcolm. So, we come... We come to receive from God. This is what we do. So I think the words are going to come up on the screen. Let's just take a moment. Maybe be asking God in your own heart, what can I do? What one small thing can I do this week, this day, to seek you, to receive more of your spirit? Friends, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this. In remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is broken for all. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. So as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, O God, on this bread and this wine. That it may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. 
So together with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. So we invite all who know and love the Lord to share at his table today. As I said earlier, um, I invite you all to just stand, perhaps where you are. Um, if you would like to receive um, today, just hold, we invite, just hold out your hands as we come down the row. Um, if you prefer to receive a blessing, um, maybe just put your hand over your heart. And if for any number of very, very good reasons you don't wish to receive communion today, um, then just keep your hands down by your side or, or feel free to sit in your seat um, and that's absolutely fine. Uh, as I said earlier, we will, um, we will be distributing in silence. Um, so let's just say together, this is the body of Christ which is broken for you, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Um, I should just say that there is gluten-free available if that's what you'd like. Just indicate to us as we come by and we'll come get it for you.
majesty Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but alive in your hands Majesty Majesty, forever we are changed by your love in the presence of your majesty. So we have gathered in worship of God. We have received from his word of his spirit and we have shared in communion together. All that is left is for us to be sent out into the world as Christ's ambassadors, as his representatives, as his people to proclaim his good news in the world. So, go into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold on to what is good. Never pay back evil for evil. Encourage the disheartened. Support the weary. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen. It's been wonderful to gather together, both with those at home and here, and we look forward to gathering you again next week. Take care.